you know when it comes to developing your strength and power for Australian rules football using the Carl Dietz triphasic training methodology. So he's a famous collegiate uh, strength and conditioning coach. Uh, he's had great uh, results with this program and it's something that I like to use for athletes that are in a rehab phase. So they've the competition is far away f- from them. They've got at least an eight-week block before they're playing a game or for healthy athletes during the off-season for the same reason, competition is, is far away. Uh, so we'll dive straight into it and then make sure to hang around. I've got a free workout. This is all about a cross-training workout, uh, an important test that I like to do with athletes so you can prescribe um, a objective markers to their fitness level. And of course, who's coming on the podcast, we've got three really exciting guests on the podcast this week. Um, and uh, yeah, two international guests, as well as a really well known uh, Australian uh, hamstring expert. So stick around for that. If you're listening in live, either on YouTube or over here on TikTok, make sure to send us through some questions. Anthony Chambers, I've got your recent question about how to improve your box squat, a percentage-based 1RM uh, program and some um, resources around that. So I've got some lined up for you. So um, you're on our Coaches Academy, so I'll base the questions more from a strength and conditioning point of view on programming design uh, rather than from the athlete's perspective. So stick around and also we've got dean benton's recent blog post that i shared all over our socials during the week uh it's going viral on on linkedin uh as far as viral goes for for my posts anyway uh getting some great engagement with people in the industry commenting and sharing their opinions on what's quite a uh probably not controversial topic but certainly a passionate one in the industry when it comes to uh the high rate of acls in uh, professional women's sport uh everyone's coming i think from what I've seen, people coming from a great place in trying to reduce the likelihood of, of uh, and mitigate uh, non-contact ACL injuries. And I believe D Benton has come up with a great resource. Um, as we well know in the area, and I've had Tim McGraw on the podcast, uh, his clinic, The Pitch in Canberra, is a fantastic resource. A lot of pro clubs will send uh, their athletes over to Tim McGrath for a thorough screening and then putting a program in place and to give the conf- uh, confidence to the athlete and the high performance medical team that they're ready to return to play. Uh, Dean's created something similar. However, you can do it anywhere just using your phone and it rates really high within 95% uh, when compared to the Vicon uh, Biomac uh, bio bio uh, lab. So, Um, Some great work done by Dean and really happy to share that on our socials and the blog post. So if you're looking for more information, make sure to click the link in the show notes to read that blog post. But we'll get straight into it. Triphasic training, as I mentioned, Carl Dietz's program, something that I've practiced on myself over the years and I've done with Australian rules footballers. Like I said, really quite relevant for those that have got competitions far away. So if you're in the weekly cycle of playing at the moment and this time of year and late July, uh, finals are on the horizon. So you don't really want to be trying something new, especially a high stimulus like um, the triphasic program. However, if you're in the off season or you're in more your medium long-term rehab, it can be a great uh, program to break through some results and improve your uh, strength. So we'll get straight into it. It's simply being, it's typically a six week program. I program it with three total body sessions. So you could do it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, give a minimum of 48 hours in between just for quality uh, sake rather than doing back-to-back days of it. Um, you do it on your big lifts. So your bench press, your bench pull, weighted chin-ups, uh, box squat and trap bar deadlift. So pick three of those. Uh, and typically because it's quite a, a challenging uh, neural um, workout I, I, and we're focusing on that more that neural dominant drive for so focusing more on how well you can recruit um, your muscles and, and generate force um, we want to make sure that we're getting adequate rest in between so that's where um, one day on one day off works quite well uh, and doing it in a total body workout rather than just doing body bleak body splits where you, it's hard to have the frequency. So if you can do bench press three times a week, if you can box squat three times a week and or box squat, sorry, twice a week and deadlift once, um, you're going to get that uh, strength development in the lower body with the box squat and the deadlift and you're going to get break through some plateau with your bench press uh, and your weighted chin ups or prone pull depending on which one you want to focus on. So pick your big lifts, your big compound lifts. We go through we start with an eccentric block, which is um, 
uh, probably my favourite and most effective out of the three phases because I feel like you can't cheat an eccentric block if you do it properly. We want to spend majority of that three to four second uh, eccentric tempo on the way down. So if it's a bench press, you're lowering the bar towards your chest. That's the eccentric contraction of the muscles. Um, and what we want to try and do is focus on where you're weakest in that lift. So perhaps before you start the six-week block, and this is what we do on our online gainers program we test everyone all the athletes on the program find out their one rep max and then ask the athlete where did you find um was your sticking point was it at the bottom of the bench press driving out of the hole driving the bar off your chest or was it locking out so your, your tricep elbow strength is locking out at the top of the rep once we've got that information we then program the exercises specific to strengthening those weakest points so if you're for example if your weakest position when you did your one rep max on the bench press was driving your chest off the bar. When you're doing the eccentric, we want to be focusing in the majority of that three to four seconds at the bottom as we're getting closer towards the chest. Okay, so you pretty much go easy at the start of the rep and then just spend two or three seconds as we're getting close to the chest to, to get more of a um, focus on that area and then um, really focus on developing strength through in that weaker portion. So you're going to do that two times a week. And as I mentioned, try and get three sessions a week. So you might do bench press on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday as your key lift, and then you've chosen to do bench pull um, as your upper body pull movement. So you do that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. For your lower body, I probably wouldn't trap by deadlift for footballers three times a week because they're always running. So we will, we'll probably deadlift once a week and we'll box squat twice. So we box squat at the start of the week um, on the Monday, Wednesday, and then I like to deadlift always at the end of the week, um, typically because it's a little bit more of a fatigue movement. So if you're doing that on the Friday, you're getting 72 hours before you then box squatting again on Monday, so you should be recovered um, from that point. So I go Monday, Wednesday, box squat, Friday, deadlift. It's flexibility around that, though, as well. If athletes prefer to go Monday, box squat, Wednesday, deadlift, and Friday, box squat, uh, of course, it's flexible. It's a conversation with the athlete. So we do that for two weeks, sticking with that uh, uh, template, typically doing three to five sets of anywhere between three and five repetitions of those uh, three to four seconds on the way down. Um, your weight will be um, whatever weight you can maintain. So it's plateau loading. You're not increasing the weight. Every set and every, um, across those five sets, you're just keeping the weight consistent and it should be a weight that you can control really well for that tempo for all the volume. If you crush, let's say you, you choose to do 50% of your bench press, so you're benching 100, you do 50 kilos, and you do five by five with a three second eccentric tempo on the way down and then drive up um, and you crush it, get all your reps. Then next week, just add like a five kilo, 5%. Then from there, we do an isometric phase, same focus working on the weakest point of lift. So for someone that's at the bottom, let's let's focus now on someone who actually, so that would be simple. The, the bar would be set up where you're pushing into the safety pins just above the chest and you work on recruiting uh, as much uh, force as you can into those immovable objects, the pins, or you can use the safety hooks if you haven't got those. Uh, I've got a video of how to do that exercise and all these exercises on my YouTube channel. If you just search for Pelica Pro on YouTube, you can see um, on our playlist, we have all the strength uh, technique videos there. If you can't find it, just message me on Instagram or TikTok and I'll send you the link. Um, then also focusing on the top of the lift. So that's where we'd have the bar just higher up off the chest just before the elbows are about to lock up, lock out. And that's the same thing. You're focusing on maximal force for that three to five seconds. Um, so we are working on strength, not uh, power. So for this one, we want to try and hit that high force and, and hold it all the way through. Um, so you might need about two or three seconds to build to hit that force and then you hold it for two seconds. Conversely, if you're working on rate of force development, we want to try and hit your force as quickly as possible. So it's a real rapid um, contraction, and you might only hold it for two or three seconds, uh, for example, because it's such a fast contraction. Do this so that it's not weighted. So just go anywhere between uh, three to four reps, I find is good, uh, three to four sets. It's quite taxing. Uh, neurally if you do that with high intensity so not a lot of volume but you're getting um, that stimulus three times a week so you do it for two weeks that isometric block then the last two weeks of the six-week program we move into the concentric phase so that's what everyone would typically know where you lower the bar down to the chest and you drive up um, if you're focusing on for those that their sticking point their weakest point was at the bottom of the chest driving up i would do pulse reps so if we're doing a set of five 
you lower down, you hit the chest, you drive up to your weakest point, you come back down and hit the chest, come back up and you do that for four times. And then on the fifth rep, you finish off the set. Um, and then for those that are, their weakest point is at the top of the lift where we'd working on locking out the elbow, I would go an extra 20% heavier than your bench press. So for the 100 kilo bencher, 120 kilos on the bar and we're doing a pin press. So you're reducing the range of motion, hence why we've got more weight on the bar um, and we're, the, the bar starts in the normal safety in the hooks. You rack it out, you tap it down, it gets to a dead stop and then you're driving the bar up to elbow lockout. Uh, same thing if it helps, watch a video on our um, YouTube channel. Just look for... Um, pin press um, on Prepare Like a Pro. Uh, so that's for those that are struggling with the lockout. Six-week program, give it a go. Do it three times a week, particularly if you're not competing at the moment with football. And I'd love to know if you break through and, and hit a new PB with your bench press. I actually quite like to do it. And then before retesting the one round max, going into then a traditional program. So that's what we do in our online program. We do that. Builds really good technique during the eccentric phase where you can't cheat. Um, you then isometrically really getting learning how to really recruit and maximally brace and produce force. And then concentric, you work on that um, ability to be able to um, move in your weakest point concentrically, which is a bit more specific to what we need to do at the task. And then I go through like a four-week program of still lifting three times a week on that lift, but just more your standard periodized program, like five by five um, and working through, or you can follow like the Jim Wendler program uh, for example where you're just doing the full range of movement training the specific exercise as it as it's normally done isotonically which is just where you lower the weight down full range and then press it back up for the bench press do a block for four weeks lifting three times a week then retest your um, one round max um, if you have any further questions on that uh, and if you're interested to follow our program where i use these methodologies and you don't have to think and uh, periodize it, it's all done for you. You just have to put the work in. Uh, you can tr check out our program. We've actually just gone through a heavy strength program for the, for the gainers. So if you want to increase your muscle mass and gain size and you're in season, we're not doing the triphasic because we're in season at the moment, um, then check out our website, prepareleckapro.com. There's a free 14 day trial to join there. Anthony Chambers, as I mentioned, sent through a question. Uh, so how to build lower body strength. His, for him, it was the box squat um, using one rep max uh, percentage-based lifting. So episode six in our academy, the Coaches Academy, if you head to that on the Get Better plan, I've just emailed you the link, Anthony, and anyone listening that's a co in our Coaches Academy, it's only $20 a month, and there's all the resources that I've done over the last few years as well as guests. Um, we're going to be doing some guest workshops very shortly. It all lives in the academy. Check out our Jim Wendler 531 program for Australian rules footballers. There's a blog post, which I'll add to the show notes of this podcast. Um, so make sure to check that out. That's a great um, program to follow. Minimum effective dose, and, you're gonna, and it really works quite well for those that want to improve their max strength. Um, and overall, for percentage-based lifting, the main thing I would say is you want to make sure you, you're – one rep max is 100% accurate. So uh, how did you go about finding that one rep max? Was it valid? Were you feeling, um, did you feel like you executed your lift really well that day? Because um, sometimes we can have a really good day in training when we one rep max and it's um, probably above your norm. Uh, other days we can underperform it. So I tend to like to follow just more uh, either load prescription um, or uh, use gym aware and you and use velocity based training that way it's relevant to how the athlete is feeling on the day um, or just simply use do step loading so by that the if you're doing five sets of five um, the weight isn't prescribed you just let the athlete build up to a heavy five for the day um, so it's simple um, but it's usually uh, quite agile so really good for you if you're in season where you're listening to your body and you're working within your body on the day. Conversely, if you're in the off-season, pre-season, and you have been lifting for a number of years, and you've got a good idea of what your RMA max is, and you know how to test and do that reliably well, then um, using percentage-based lifting can be really effective, of course. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit more information on that. Happy to do a future weekly update podcast on specifically percentage-based lifting. If you think we need a bit more information, hit me up in the discussion forum on the Academy, Anthony. But thank you for sending in this question. Podcast for this week, we've got Greg Mueller. I had that interview a couple of weeks ago with Greg. It was super engaging, really unique topic on leadership and culture. 
and some of the issues in high-performance sports. So if you're an S&C looking to work in the industry, make sure to check out that episode. It'll be published this Wednesday, and you can listen to it wherever you listen to your podcast. Please rate and review our podcast. It goes a long way in helping us reach more listeners. The three live episodes we have this week, Jonas Dodo, who's a speed and acceleration expert, uh, he'll be on the show at 2.30 p.m. on Wednesday. So if you've got any questions for Jonas, make sure to hit us up. Really looking forward to that chat. As I mentioned, Ryan Timmons, hamstring expert. So anything to do with the latest research, Ryan's been involved in lots of them. He's got the finger on the pulse, um, but he was also um, really in tune with how to practically apply it in elite sport and with um, athletes. So really looking forward to catching up with Ryan and, and discussing everything we need to know when it comes to pre- mitigating hamstring injuries. And then 9 a.m., Claudio Alteri, who's we're going to discuss the difference between football, that is soccer, um, from a professional club level compared to national and what it's like as an SNC working in those different environments. Um, that's 9 a.m. this Friday. As I mentioned, check out the ACL injury prevention mitigation uh, blog post that Dean Benton created for us. You can ch- find that out if you just Google for Dean Benton ACL, we will pop up there. Uh, our recent blog post that I did on what is most important for um, mitigating injuries when it comes to team field-based athletes. On LinkedIn, it was pretty strong, as well as Twitter. Developing robust athletes is number one at 60% and Twitter 68. Warm-ups and cool-downs, effective warm-ups and cool-downs, only 5% on LinkedIn, zero on Twitter. Uh, An effective, adequate periodized program came out 14% on LinkedIn, 30% on Twitter. And movement competency, 21% on LinkedIn, 19% on, on Twitter. So the pretty consistent findings. Um, the belief at the moment for high-performance staff uh, is that building robust athletes, resilient athletes, they're strong through hard and smart training is going to uh, mitigate the risk of injuries and protect those athletes. Uh, and that's probably the highest value of those key areas that we like to pride ourselves on when it comes to programming. Not to say that they're all uh, connected, uh, they're all valuable, um, and they all have their place, but it was just interesting to post these polls and just see what do people value the most. Uh, and, and make sure to head over to uh, my personal LinkedIn if you want to get engaged in that poll. There's still three days to go. Uh, if you're listening in live, if you listen to the podcast version of this, of course, it's expired, but I just put these polls up once a week on LinkedIn and Twitter, and they last for seven days uh, on some controversial topics just to see, get some conversations going on those platforms and and ultimately just to help us all learn and and, um, and get an engaging discussion going. This week's going to be a pretty simple one. It's on your favorite social media platform if you're a strength and initiative coach or a hub for staff. So is it Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or any others? So easy one for people to get involved in. Workout for this week is a 20-minute functional threshold test on the Watt bike. I love it, um, particularly in rehab. It's a really good one to be able to prescribe the average watts that the athlete gets from that. Uh, there's heaps of workouts on the Watt bike um, website that you can do, but also you can just come up with your basic workouts using percentage base, almost like uh, we do with our 2K time trial or yo-yo testing where we prescribe MAS, maximum aerobic speed. You can just do the same thing, use the average watts and do percentages, whether you're working on aerobic stimulus, you might work at 90% of your average speed, but you're doing three to one work to rest ratio, or if you're doing threshold sessions at 100 and 110% of your average watts um, with, uh, you know, slightly less work to rest ratios, maybe it's one to one or or, um, two to one um, for, you know, seven or eight minute uh, sets. And then the anaerobic stuff, so sprints, uh, super maximal, working with up to 150% of your average watts. And of course, um, doing some more your anaerobic uh, workouts where you're working at um, 120 to 130%. Um, so you're really working on that uh, anaerobic quality, particularly important for athletes that aren't accruing high speed in sprint distance during their rehab or in part of their early stage off season. Uh, the Watt bike can be a great way just to get some, a different stimulus and just keep from a physiological point of view, keeping them fit. We know it doesn't transfer very well to running uh, or we, we, we suspect it doesn't, um, uh, but it's a really good way to just get that extra aerobic stimulus in. Particularly if you're in season as well, you could do that far away from the game. On If you played Saturday like on a Monday, two days post-game, to get an aerobic stimulus if you're um, joint compromised as well so you can't get maybe on the, on the ground and do running, you might just use the, the Watt bike to get a good 30-minute hit. 
that's it for this free workout and that's it for this week's update i hope you found some gems there and some helpful content uh, i post every week on our um, podcast a topic if you've got a topic and you're an academy member or even if you're not an academy member and you think it'd be great for me to present it on um, just hit us up on our socials and i'll make sure to fit it in the calendar thanks everyone for tuning in i will see you on the show during the week